Welcome to On Tessel's video series for new teachers. Through these videos, you'll learn some of the skills necessary to delivering current and successful instruction in English. My name is Aaron, and today I'll be talking about creating a functional learning environment. You may not have control over the physical environment of the school or classroom you work in, but you'll always be able to make decisions that will influence how people interact in your space. You want your classroom and the students in it to become a community where each member is aware of their role and expectations are very clear. How do we create a classroom that students enjoy coming to every day? In this video, I'm going to be talking about healthy learning communities, positive social interaction in and outside of the classrooms that we want to encourage, and the activities and routines that help us do this. Great classroom communities are places where people feel comfortable. They're places where everyone is included and involved. In our classrooms, we want our students to share of themselves, have fun, and challenge each other to do better. We want students to feel comfortable enough to take risks and ask questions. They are spaces of creativity, celebration, and energy. Learning a language, in many cases, is as much a social activity as it is a professional or academic one. In order to encourage the development of strong social community in your class, you need to be a social leader. As someone who students look to for a standard of interaction, you need to model warmth and interest in each person in your class. Remember, even though your job is to teach English, the way that you treat students can have a major impact on their success. One important way of creating a good social environment is by personalizing language activities, so that in addition to learning grammar or vocabulary, students are also learning something about each other. I'm going to tell you about a first class activity that I use with intermediate or advanced classes to help them get to know each other a little bit better. We'll call this activity writing biographies. The first thing I do is to have students read from the first pages of famous novels narrated by memorable characters. Novels like Great Expectations or Moby Dick, and I have them do a little work with the language in them. Then I'll have students pair up and interview each other. I encourage students to ask meaningful questions and try to have them use their best language skills. The final product of this activity is a one-page piece of introductory writing that can take any form. It could be a poem, or a Facebook profile, or a traditional biography. I ask them also to take a picture, which I print the next day, and I have them put the picture and the photograph up on the wall of the classroom. I make sure that they invest effort into making the project look good, because it's a representation of another student. I find that the care that they put into the project sets a precedent of interaction between them. I usually get really excellent results from this activity. It's important that you model inclusive learning practices, taking interest in students who might feel like outsiders, and showing them other students how to take care of their classmates. If you can spare the time, offer extra help to struggling students to help them catch up a little so that they can participate more in communicative exercises that will happen in class. In general, it's really important that you spend time with students one-on-one -on -one so that you build a professional and personal relationship that allows you to know and help them better. Suggest to your students that they visit the library together after class and practice their English, and make sure that each student has a chance at some point to show their classmates some of their skills beyond English, especially for lower level students. This is an important part of their building confidence. Building positive routines helps your students achieve their goals more quickly. Good routines create efficiency. If students know what to expect in their next class, they can prepare in advance and maximize their time in class for practice. Finally, good routines will show students how they've improved when they realize that a task they've been doing for some time has become more manageable. Here's an example of a routine that I use with intermediates. It's great because it's student-led and it creates a focused and relaxed way to start the day. Every day, I have two students report some news from the day before. I tell them that it has to be something that they thought was interesting, and that they have to introduce three new words as part of their summary. 
and that they can't read. I split the class into two and I have each student tell their news story to half of the class. Then, each person who listened finds someone from the opposite group who heard about a different piece of news, and the two exchange stories. Then, once they've done telling each other, I have a short whole class discussion to go over some of the vocabulary and talk about the stories. It's a great way to start the day that's student-led. They'll choose the articles that are relevant to them, so you don't need to worry so much about finding the right material. The kind of organization that I'm talking about where students teach each other is called Jigsaw, and you can read about it more on the link on the slide. If I have groups over a longer period of time, I like to create a routine for reading that's called reading circles. Again, this helps students take control of their learning. The idea is that for any new text that you want students to study, they're going to approach it in small groups with each person having a clear role. For instance, one person will have the role of summarizing the text and another might focus on making connections to other texts and another will be in charge of highlighting important ideas or vocabulary. You can read the great work of someone named Tyson Seaburn on academic reading circles at the link. He's created and shared some excellent handouts to help you get your students going with reading circles. Finally, here's a routine that works well with lower level students. It's a great way to start class, focus the energy, and help students get to know each other a little bit. Each day I have a student share a photograph with the class and spend five minutes talking about the photo. Students can share a photo of themselves or their friends or a place that they've been. The important thing is that their audience gets to know something about them. In the process, it's likely that the presenter will share some new vocabulary that they learned while preparing for the presentation, and you can work off of that. Sometimes a fun and relaxing five-minute presentation is all that it takes for students to feel comfortable and get ready to learn. I think that facilitating social engagements between students is really important. Extracurricular activities are a really great way to do this. If you teach students who are studying abroad, suggest activities that they can do together which also have a very clear language focus. This could be reviewing an art show or reviewing a restaurant or seeing a film that you've discussed in class. Try to connect what students are doing outside of the class to what they're doing inside of the class so that they get more practice. It's also important to coordinate social gestures like birthday cards when students have a birthday, or getting the class to create a buy card, a good buy card when someone's leaving. Make sure that all the students are included, if you can, in what's happening outside of class. To review, remember that it's important to invest in building social community in your class. Model the kind of interaction that you want to see from your students and make sure that you have clear connections between the social activities that students are doing and the language that they're learning in class. Always remember that learners who feel comfortable and happy are going to improve more. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've enjoyed it. Enjoy your teaching and see you next time.